So today I'm going to teach you how to knit a basic sock. I know this is a really intimidating thing to learn to knit and it's especially hard when you find a pattern but there's no tutorials included. So today I'm going to walk you through all the steps in order to knit your first sock. So a vanilla sock just means that it's all knitting. There's no stitch pattern to follow or anything like that. It's just very, very basic. So this pattern has a heel flap and gusset. So it's worked from the top down. So you start at the cuff up here, work your way down. Now this looks really complicated, I know, but just a little bit of short rows, which I will walk you through. And I'm gonna walk you through every step of this sock to make it really nice and easy for you. This pattern is worked using worsted weight yarn. I think it's really great for beginners to learn the techniques in the fastest, easiest way possible. And worsted weight yarn is our ticket for that. This will take you no time to knit up because of how big the yarn is. Now the yardage will vary based on the size and the length of the foot, but the sample, which is size three, right in the middle, took approximately 150 yards, 137 meters of worsted weight yarn. Now, if you buy your yarn at a big box store, it might not be called worsted. It might be called medium or medium number four. So I'm using, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. This is my favorite budget friendly yarn. It's only $4.99 and you get a whopping 355 yards, 325 meters in a 200 gram ball. For needles, you'll need a set of circulars because we will be working this magic loop. You'll need a set of circulars that are a US 5, 3.75 millimeter in 32 inch 80 centimeter length or longer or a size needed to match gauge. You'll also need a yarn needle and some stitch markers. The gauge is worked in stockinette in the round and you'll get 17 stitches, 26 rounds per four inches, 10 centimeters. As mentioned before, this pattern is written for six sizes. There's enough of a range that you can knit this for men or women. There are six sizes and they're written in sequence like this. And if you've never seen a sizing structure like this, I'll explain it. So there are six sizes written in order from left to right. If you wanted to knit size two, it would be here where I've put it in bolded text. And in the pattern, it will always be in the second slot in the instructions. I recommend choosing a size with half an inch to one inch or 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters of negative ease. Ease basically just refers to how loose or how tight a knitted item will be. For socks, you will need negative ease. So you want them to be a little bit smaller than your foot so they have to stretch to fit. So to start, measure your foot circumference and subtract either half an inch, 1.5 centimeters, or one inch, 2.5 centimeters from your actual measurement. Pick a size close to that circumference. For example, my foot circumference is nine inches, 23 centimeters. So I would subtract one inch, 2.5 centimeters from that. So nine minus one equals eight. So I would choose size two, eight inch circumference. And everything you need to knit this sock is in this video. If you're watching the cut up version where it's in parts, it's all in this part series. While this is a beginner sock pattern, I'm assuming that you know how to knit one and purl one and do a basic cast on. But if you don't know how to work a knit stitch or a purl stitch, I think this pattern will be a little bit too advanced for you. And I suggest that you go practice knitting and purling. Knit something really, really basic for a little bit just to get the knit stitch down and then come back here. If you would like a written pattern, you can find that for free here. It's a dollar on Etsy just to cover some fees, but that is totally optional. You can follow this video exactly and learn how to knit a sock without ever buying anything. So first we're gonna start with the cuff. Again, these socks are worked from the cuff down. So they're worked from the ribbed cuff here down to the toe. So here are the cast on amounts, depending on the size that you chose. I'll put the sizing structure above in case you forgot, but I think it's helpful to write down which size that you chose. So I'm going to knit size two. So I would cast on 35 because it's the second option in the list. So you're going to grab your needles. You can use any cast on method that you prefer. I think a long tail cast on is great. A German twisted cast on is fantastic. Whatever cast on method you choose, you wanna make sure that you cast on loosely. The worst thing would be if you finished your sock and you couldn't get it over your foot because your cast on was too tight. You could fix that in the end, but I'd rather avoid that if we can. So here I have my 35 stitches. So we need to do an invisible join in the round. To begin, you're going to slide down to the middle of your cord. You're going to count from the right side of your cast on, which is not attached to the tails. You're going to count 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, or 22 stitches from the end, depending on the size. So I chose size two, so I'm going to count 18 stitches. 
So this is my split right here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of spread them apart and bend my cord and pull that cord out like this. And I'm going to pinch the ends so nothing is twisted. So this up here is twisted, but we can undo that. So just kind of untwist it, but we wanna make sure that the ends down here were never twisted. And then just slide them closer to the tips of your needles. So here we have it. So our yarn is closer to us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move one stitch from my back needle to my front needle. And I'm just going to use my hands. So slide your stitches down to the tips of your needle and make sure that they don't slide off. But we're going to take the closest stitch to the end of the back needle and move it to our front needle. So keeping hold of the other stitches so they don't slide off, go ahead and pick it up and just move it without twisting it to the front needle. You can kind of pull that back needle out a little bit so nothing falls off. And now we're going to take the second stitch on our needle right here, which is technically the last stitch that we cast on, the one that our yarn is attached to. We're going to pull it over the one that we just slipped and off the needle. So go ahead and grab it just with your fingers. And you can hold on to that other stitch with your finger if you want. But go ahead and pull it up, over, and off. It'll look a little bit loose. You can go ahead and pull that needle up so nothing falls off and pull on both ends of your yarn to tighten it up, and you have just joined in the round. It should look like this. There should be a join at both ends of your magic loop. So we need to turn our work, so go ahead and just grab it and just flip it. So now go ahead and grab a stitch marker, a removable stitch marker, and place it in the fabric of the needle that is now closest to you. Not in a live stitch on your needle, but just in the fabric below. And now we are ready to work on our sock. So we have just joined in the round and you've just decreased one stitch in the process. I'll put how many stitches you should have on screen. They need to be distributed evenly half on half. The way that we originally distributed them should be correct. So I am size two, I should have 17 on each needle. If you don't have the correct number, you can just slide your stitches down to the bend and just slip one stitch to the other side or slip a stitch to the needle closer to you, whichever you need in order to get the correct count. So we're gonna work in one by one rib for half an inch or 1.5 centimeters or to your desired cuff length. So I made my cuff really, really short. I just end up liking it that way. The cuff is just the ribbing. So however long you want that to be, go for it. And then we will work on the leg, which is this part. My advice for the cuff and the leg total length is you don't wanna make it super long because then it'll start to get closer to your calf and it will need to be wider. But now I'm gonna teach you how to do some magic loop. So we've already got a good basis for it. So you see how we have a front needle and a back needle. So these are needle one stitches and these are needle two stitches. I'm going to bring the working yarn in between the needles and around kind of towards the back. Okay, so in between like this. And now we're going to pull out needle two or the back needle. Pull it out until you have a little bit of cord on the left and enough cord on the right to comfortably knit with. And you can slide your needle one stitches up closer to the edge. Holding your needles like this, if you've never done magic loop, might take some getting used to. It becomes much easier after you have a few established rows. The first couple of rows always feel a little bit clunky and weird, so don't give up. It'll start to feel better after you've worked a couple inches. So I grab onto my yarn like normal, and I kind of hold on to the front needle as well, like this. You don't have to do exactly what I do, but I, I'm just holding it with my middle finger a little bit and holding the yarn with my back two fingers. Just as reference, I'm a continental knitter, so I hold the yarn in my left hand. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, nothing wrong with that, it's just a different style. Now we just need to work in one by one ribbing for half an inch. So knit the first stitch, yarn to the front, and purl the next stitch, yarn to the back and knit the next stitch, yarn to the front and purl the next stitch, and just repeat that until you've knit all the stitches off of this first needle. Some sizes will have an even number of stitches on each needle and some will have an odd. I have 17 stitches, so I'm going to end on a knit stitch. So I knit one, purl one until I have one stitch left, and then I end with a knit stitch, okay? And the other half of my needles will be a purl one, knit one until I have one stitch left, and I will end with a purl one. So this is just assuming that you are able to read your knitting a little bit to remember if you're working with an odd number of stitches. On the first half of your stitches, you begin with a knit one, end with a knit one, and on your second half, you begin with a purl one, end with a purl one. We've just finished our first half, 
So go ahead and slide these stitches up onto the middle of your needle for now. You can drop your left hand needle and we're going to turn our work. Just go ahead and grab your work here and flip it. And now we need to push on the loose cord here and slide our stitches up onto the now closer needle. So we've done half of our work. We've done this half here and now we need to do the other half. So remember, I'm working with an odd number of stitches. So I start with a purl stitch and end with a purl stitch on this half. If you have an even number of stitches on each half, you will begin with a knit one and end with a purl one. When you are working in Magic Loop, you always pull out the back needle and you always pull it out until you have a little bit left on your left hand side and enough to work with on your right hand side. So I'm going to bring my yarn around to the front, go into the first stitch and purl it. Whenever I get to the second stitch on my needle, I'm going to go into it as normal, but I'm going to pull on the working yarn a little bit to close up any gaps, okay? I'll explain why in a minute. And then yarn over like normal and work the stitch as normal. And then you just keep going all the way across until all of these stitches on this needle have been worked. And we work our final stitch. And I slide my stitches up onto my needle a little bit so they don't fall off. Drop the other needle and turn our work. Now push up on the cord and slide those stitches up onto your front needle. So do you see how in between our needles there's a little bit of fabric? It can get a little bit loose in between and you'll get something called laddering. And if you're getting laddering anyway, don't worry. That's something that gets kind of worked out with time. The more practice you have working in Magic Loop or DPNs, the less laddering you will have. So it will even out the more that you knit. That was one cuff row. Go ahead and work that same process until you have as many ribbed rows as you want. So I'll work one more ribbed row with you. So remember to pull out the back needle, work across these first stitches here, turn your work and work across the back stitches here again. And remember, you work the first stitch normally and then when you go into the second stitch, you pull tight a little bit with your working yarn and just Work that stitch normally. You don't have to pull super tight. You just wanna kinda of close the gap. You don't have to be super insane with how tight you pull, but just go ahead and work a few more cuff rows and I'll meet you back here for the leg. So now that we've knit the cuff for about half an inch or your desired length, it should start to look like this. We're back to our marker so we know we're back to the beginning of the round and it should look like this. You can see how this is the beginning of a sock. So now we're going to knit just the plain leg. So this is just plain stockinette. So you're just going to work in stockinette until the leg of your sock measures the desired length. If you want really short socks, you could only knit, you know, half an inch to an inch. It's up to you. We're going to pull out the back needle as we have been doing. And now we're going to knit the entire round just like normal. Just go ahead and knit. And when you go into the second stitch on your needle, as we've established, just go ahead and pull extra on the working yarn and knit that stitch. Keep going. That is always the second stitch of each needle. There we have it. That is the first half done. Drop your left needle and turn your work. Now push on the cord to slide the stitches up onto the closer needle. Pull out the back needle. Go into the front loop of the first stitch. Knit it as normal. Go into the second stitch and pull extra on that yarn and then knit that one as normal. And go ahead and knit across. And that's it. That is your first leg row. So go ahead and drop your left needle and turn your work. Slide your stitches back onto your front needle. And that's it. You just work that same row, knitting every stitch all the way around until you have your desired leg length. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for the next section. So now that we're done with the leg portion of our sock, it's time to work on the heel. So this is kind of an example of what it's gonna look like in the end. So it looks kind of complicated because you see we're going a little bit diagonal here. So what we do is I'll put a couple diagrams on the screen here, but I'll walk you through every step and explain it. We're gonna do a heel flap and gusset. So this is not a short row heel, but it does involve some short rows. So essentially we are going to knit back and forth flat on half of our stitches. This is what it kind of looks like. This is our heel flap, covers the back of our heel. So we knit this on half our stitches. And then we do our heel turn, which is, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but we have to round out the bottom of our heel. And then our gusset is to join the heel flap and heel turn to the rest of our sock. 
we end up with this diagonal look here. It sounds very complicated up front, but I'll break it down for you. To begin, we have to redistribute our stitches. So I'll put them on screen here. So needle one is the needle closest to you when you're starting your row. So the one with our marker in it is our needle one stitches. And then your needle two will have this many stitches. So I currently have 17 stitches on needle one. I need to redistribute that to only have 16. So in order to do that, I'm going to slide my stitches down by pulling on the needles. Until we get down to the bend in our cord. So I'm going to pinch that bend, slide our stitches down, and I need to have 16 stitches on needle one. I have 17 currently, so I need to move one from needle one to needle two. So I just bend down to the cord and just kind of slide one stitch over and then pull on that bend in the cord and push my needles back on. So now I can recount my stitches and I should have 16 on needle one. And again, check your size because you'll need 16, 18, or 20 depending on the size you chose. So I have 16 on one needle and 18 on the other. We are going to stop working in the round and we're only going to work on the stitches that are currently on needle one for now. So we're just going to knit back and forth, just flat plain for a couple of inches. Row one, which is a right side row, we're going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in back, knit one, and you repeat that all the way across. So if you've never slipped a stitch, I'll teach you how to do that. As we've been doing, we're going to pull out the back needle, and we're only going to be working with these front stitches here. To begin, we're going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in back. So to slip a stitch purlwise, you go into it as if you were going to purl it, but instead you just move it to your right hand needle. And with the yarn in back means with the yarn in the back of your work. So with the yarn behind our needle in the back of our work, right? Go into the first stitch as if to purl. So from right to left like this and just move it to your right hand needle. And now we're going to knit one. So go into the next stitch as if to knit, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And that's your repeat. So slip one purlwise with the yarn in back, knit one all the way across. So again with our yarn in the back of our work, go into the next stitch from right to left as if to purl it, and just slip it to your right hand needle, knit the next stitch, slip the next one as if to purl with the yarn in the back, knit one, and just repeat that. So slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. And every size has an even number of stitches, so you should end with a knit one. So that was row one. And now, because we're no longer working in the round, we're working flat for a little while, we're going to turn our work. So go ahead and flip it. You don't need to change how your needles are because we're just going to work back from right to left across this needle. Again, we're only working on those 16, 18, or 20 stitches that are on needle one. For row two, which is a wrong side row, you're going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in front and then purl across. So you only slip the first stitch and then purl the rest of the stitches. So slip one purlwise with the yarn in front is very similar to what we just did, but this time the yarn remains in the front of your work. So it should already be in the front of your work and you're going to slip the first stitch as if to purl. So go into it from right to left as if you're going to purl it and just slip it to your right hand needle. It might stretch out like this, that's okay. We'll even it out in the second stitch. Go ahead and purl across. So go into the next stitch from right to left, even out that stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And again, into the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And that's it, you just purl all the way across the row. It may feel a little bit clunky in the beginning, but once we have a few rows of our heel flap done, it will start to feel better. There we have it. Go ahead and turn your work. And bring your yarn around to the back of your needle. If it's in the front like this, just bring it around to the back, it should not be twisted. So for row three, we're on another right side row. So this time we're going to slip two purlwise with the yarn in back and then repeat a knit one, slip one purlwise with the yarn in back until you have two stitches left, which you will knit. A slip two purlwise with the yarn in back means that you're going to slip two stitches as if you were going to purl them at the same time while keeping the yarn in the back of your work. The yarn is in the back of our work and you go into the first two stitches as if you were going to purl them. 
So into the first stitch from right to left, and then into a second stitch from right to left. So at the same time, going into both of them, and then just slip them to your right hand needle, and that's it. You've slipped those two stitches with the yarn held in the back, and now we're going to knit the next stitch. And then you slip one purl wise with the yarn in back. So into the next stitch from right to left as if you were going to purl it, but just slip it to your right hand needle. And then knit one, and then slip one, and then knit one. And you do this until you have two stitches left. So your last stitch here should be a slip stitch, and then you've got two on your left hand needle. And you're just going to knit the last two stitches. You can drop your needle and turn your work. And for row four, which is a wrong side row, we're going to do the same thing that we did for row two. So we're going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in front and then purl across. So you only slip the first stitch of the row. So the yarn held in the front of our work here, go into the first stitch on the needle from right to left, as if you're going to purl it and just slip it to your right hand needle. And then go into the next stitch and purl it. So you can kind of even out the tension of that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and you just purl all the way across. And there we have it, that is row four. So go ahead and drop your needle and turn your work and bring our yarn around the needle to the back. Okay, so it's not twisted or sitting over our needle, it's just hanging out in the back as it should be. So that is your repeat. So you're going to work rows one through four until your heel flap is approximately as long as it is wide and end with a finished wrong side row. So a good fitting heel flap is usually between 1.5 to 2.5 inches or four to six and a half centimeters long, depending on your preference. So the sample is approximately two inches, five centimeters long, and it can be helpful to write down the number of rows you've worked in the heel flap so the second sock will be identical. Go ahead and work those four rows until you reach your desired length. This part is going to sit on the very back of your foot along your heel. So however long you want that to be, you could measure you know, your heel from the ground up to see how long you want it to be. But again, a good fitting heel flap is usually between 1.5 and 2.5 inches or four to 6.5 centimeters long. And because we're working with slip stitches, I'm going to measure it as I go. Our stockinette gauge is going to be different than our heel flap gauge. So I'm not gonna go off of my row gauge that I used for my sock. I'm just gonna measure it as I go, write it down so that I'll know for the second sock how long to make it. So go ahead and repeat those four rows and I'll meet you back here for the heel turn. So at the end, this is what your heel flap should look like. It should be just half of your stitches knitted flat to create a flap of work that is only on one half of your sock. And it should have this kind of textured effect on it. So this is a slip stitch heel. So now we need to do the heel turn. So on this little example, the heel's here, and then we have the heel turn. So you see how it rounds out that corner? So the bottom of our foot it rounds out so that we can start to have a cover on the bottom of our foot. So for this portion, we're going to do some short rows. If you've never done short rows before, I promise I will make this very easy for you. But essentially what you're doing is only knitting part of a row instead of the full row. So instead of knitting across the whole row, you knit until about, you know, here and then turn around and work back. So you're just working part of the row instead of one full row. We're going to work four setup rows and then you repeat rows three and four until all of our stitches have been worked and I'll explain that in a minute. So again, we're only working on these stitches on your first needle here. We're not working on any of these stitches just yet. So for row one, which is a right side row, we're going to slip one knit wise with the yarn in back and then knit either eight, nine, or 10 stitches depending on your size. And then an SSK, knit one and turn. I'm size two, so I'm going to knit eight after my slip one. With the yarn held in the back of our work, we're going to slip one knit wise. So this time we're going to slip it as if to knit. So go into the front loop of the first stitch as if you're going to knit it, but just slip it to your right hand needle. And the yarn is kept in the back of your work. And now you're going to knit eight, nine, or 10 stitches depending on your size. I'm going to knit eight. So I can double check. I slipped one and then two, four, six, eight. So now we need to work an SSK and that is a slip, slip, knit, decrease. I work it a modified way, which I'll show you, 
but you can also work it a normal way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to slip the first stitches of to knit, slip the second stitches of to purl, and then knit them together through the back loop. With your yarn held in the back of your work, go into the next stitches of to knit, so into the front loop from front to back, but just slip it to your right hand needle. And now go into the next stitch as if to purl. So into the front loop from right to left, and just slip it to your right hand needle. And now we need to bring our left hand needle into the front loops of those two stitches at the same time. So from left to right into just the front loops like this, and then we're going to yarn over and pull that yarn over through both those stitches. And then you can slide them off your left hand needle. It should look something like this. And now we need to knit one stitch. So knit one normally, and that was row one. You should have a few stitches on your left hand needle and the rest on your right. We're going to go ahead and turn our work so you can let go of them and just flip it. Our yarn should be in the front of our work here. And for row two, which is a wrong side row, you're going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in front, purl three stitches, purl two together, and then purl one stitch and then turn. With the yarn held in the front of your work, so go into the next stitch from right to left as if to purl, but just slip it to your right hand needle and then purl three stitches. So into the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, side off, and purl two more for a total of three. And now you're going to purl two together. Essentially, you're going to go into the next two stitches as if you were going to purl them individually, but purl them together. So go into the front loop of the first stitch from right to left, and then also into the next stitch into the front loop of it from right to left. Okay, so we have gone into the front loops of two stitches at the same time, and then you yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through, and then you can slide those two stitches off your needle. So pull on the working yarn to kind of even out that stitch if you need to, and then purl the last stitch. And that is row two. So we're going to turn our work. So just kind of let it rest, flip it. I'm going to bring my yarn around to the back so it's not over my needle or anything. So now we're done with rows one and two, and it's time for rows three and four, which is our repeat. So row three, which is a right side row, we're going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in back and then knit to one stitch before the gap work an SSK and a knit one. So the gap might sound confusing, but do you see how we have a gap right here? It's pretty noticeable. We worked an SSK and then we knit one and then we turned, so there should be a gap. So we're going to knit until one stitch before that gap, which would be this one right here. So the yarn is held in the back of my work and I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to purl. So go into it from right to left, but just slip it to my right hand needle. And then I knit to one stitch before this gap. The gap is right here. So I'm going to knit until I get to one stitch before it. So here's my gap. I stopped one stitch short. So now we need to work an SSK again. So remember you slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second stitch as if to purl, and then knit them together through the back loop. Into the next stitch as if to knit it, but just slip it to your right hand needle. Into the next stitch as if to purl, but just slip it to your right hand needle and then bring your left hand needle into the front loops of both of those stitches at the same time. Yarn over, pull that loop through those two stitches, and then slide those two off your left hand needle. And now we need to knit one stitch, and that is row three, so you can go ahead and turn your work. So careful that those stitches don't slide off, and turn your work. Now for row four, which is a wrong side row. We're gonna do virtually what we just did on row three, but the purl version. So slip one purl wise with the yarn in front, and then purl to one stitch before the gap, purl two together, purl one. So the gap should also be noticeable here. Right in between these stitches, there's a pretty sizable gap. So I'm going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in front. The yarn is in the front of my work now. So I'm going to go into the next stitch as if to purl, but just slip it to my right hand needle and then purl until I have one stitch before that gap. And now we're going to purl two together. So go into the front loops of the next two stitches as if to purl. So into the one closest to me and the next one, into the front loops of both as if to purl. Yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through both, slide those two off, and then we're going to purl one. 
and that is row four. Go ahead and turn your work. Being careful that these stitches don't slide off in the process. And now there should be a gap here again. And you should have the same number of stitches after a full repeat of row three and four on each end. There's a gap here, two on the right for me, gap here, two on the left. The amount of stitches here will vary depending on your size, but you should have the same on each half. Okay, if you don't, then you probably did row one wrong. So you're going to repeat rows three and four until all the stitches have been worked. And on your last two repeats, you know, the last two rows, you won't have room to work the knit one and the purl one after the decrease. That's okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. Your decrease will be at the edge. So at the end, you should be ready to start a right side row for the next section, and you should have this many stitches at the end of all the repeats. So with our yarn held in the back, we're going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in back. So into the first stitch from right to left, slip it to our right hand needle, knit until you have one stitch before the gap again, and then we'll work an SSK. And I've stopped one stitch short. So we're going to work an SSK. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to purl, into the front loops of both of those stitches, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and then knit one, and turn my work. And then we repeat row four again. So slip one purl wise with the yarn in front, purl to one stitch before the gap, purl two together, and purl one. So with our yarn held in the front like it is, slip the first stitch as if to purl, and purl to one stitch before the gap. All right, here I've stopped one stitch before the gap and I'm going to purl two together. So go into the front loops of the next two stitches at the same time, yarn over, pull a loop through and slide those two off your needle and then purl the next stitch. Go ahead and turn your work and you can see it start to take shape. It's kind of bending over a little bit. I'm supposed to have a decrease at the end of each half of my row. I had room for one more knit one and one more purl one on each end, so I'm not done yet. And I also don't have eight stitches, so I'm supposed to have eight, I have 10. So I need to do one more repeat of rows three and four. If you're unsure, look at the stitch count. If you have two more stitches than you're supposed to have, then you need to do one more repeat. Slip one purl wise with the yarn in back, knit, and we're going to knit instead of knitting to the gap, because I don't really have a gap anymore, right? So I'm going to work until I have two stitches left because I need to have a decrease at the end. Work an SSK, so slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to purl into the front loops of both. Yarn over, pull through, slide off. Turn our work. And then we need to slip one purl wise with the yarn in front, purl the one stitch before the gap, purl two together. So since we don't have room for our last purl one, we're just going to slip one as if to purl with the yarn in front, purl until we have two stitches left, and then work a purl two together. So go into the next two stitches as if to purl, yarn over, pull through, slide off, turn your work. You should have created a heel turn, okay? So it's kind of like there's space for your heel here, right? For your heel to sit. That's this section right here. So it's going to round around for the bottom of your heel. And that is how you knit the heel turn. So go ahead and knit until you have the correct amount of stitches at the end. And I will meet you back here for the gusset. So now that we've done the heel turn, it's time to work on the gusset. So the gusset, it's the part that attaches our heel flap and heel turn to the rest of our sock. So this kind of triangular shape here, that's our gusset. You might be able to better see it on the purple one. This section right here is our gusset. So we return to working in the round for this section. We have our heel flap and our heel turn, but then the rest of our stitches are all the way down here. So we have to connect them. So in order to do that, we're going to knit across our current stitches, pick up some stitches along here, work across our needle two, pick up some stitches along here. It'll feel a little bit clunky and weird for a few rows, but once you get a few rows into it and you start decreasing, you'll really start to get the rhythm of it and it will feel a lot more comfortable. We're going to be resuming working in the round. So for setup round one, this is still needle one because if you go all the way down, our marker is still here. So I'm actually going to move my marker up so it's a little bit easier to tell. So I'm just gonna put it in the fabric just below my current stitches. And now I'm going to knit across needle one, pick up and knit one stitch for every slip stitch along the heel flap, and then pick up one additional stitch to close the gap between your current needle and needle two. If we look along our heel flap edge, 
you can kind of see you can kind of see some some V's. These are slip stitches. So like here's one, here's one, here's one, and just all the way down you should have a line of slip stitches. It's the furthest most stitch. It kind of looks curled in too. Okay, all the way down we have these. We're going to be picking these up. And then when we get down to the edge, we'll pick up one along here, just so that there's not a gap between these stitches and our needle two stitches. You can pick these stitches up with your knitting needle or crochet hook if you find it easier to use a crochet hook, you can do that as well. I'll show you both methods. So go ahead and knit across needle one. Remember, you should have as many stitches as it says here. If you have too many, you did not do enough repeats of, of rows three and four from the heel turn. You need to make sure that you have the correct count here because this will give you the correct amount when we are finished with our gusset. I have knit across here. So now I'm going to drop my left hand needle for now. And now you see this line here. We're going to pick up the first one there. So I'll show you with my crochet hook first, but you can also use your knitting needle. So this does not have to be extremely exact. You know, if you're not quite sure if one is a slip stitch, but there'd be a big gap if you didn't pick it up, go ahead and pick it up. This does not have to be super, super exact. The thing that you want is you want to have the same amount picked up on one half as you do on the other half. So keep track of how many you've picked up on one so that you can be sure to pick up the same amount on the other. So my first V looks to be about right here. So either with a crochet hook in like this, going in towards the heel flap, you can pick one up, you can like yarn over, pull a loop through and then put it on your needle. That works. Or you can just kind of take your needle and go under underneath both sets of that V, yarn over, pull a loop through. Okay, you can do it either way. I think it's easier with a knitting needle, but if you're having trouble hooking it, you can always use a crochet hook yarn over, pull through, and then put it on your needle that way. So there's one, and then if I look down, you just kind of see this column of Vs that go like this. So we're going to go from the outside in with our knitting needle and pick them up, or your crochet hook and pick them up, all the way down. Do you see the next V there, right here? I'm going to go from the outside in, underneath both halves of that V, yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through, and there's another stitch on my needle. Again, you can also take your crochet hook, see the next V, go underneath it. You can also do this, yarn over, pull a loop through, and put it on your knitting needle. So do this all the way down. You want these stitches to feel about as loose as your current stitches on your needle. So not too loose, not too tight. Underneath both legs, yarn over, pull through. Underneath both legs, yarn over, pull through. All the way down. Okay, so now I've gotten down to about the end. I don't see any more slip stitch Vs. There are no Vs that are really prominent. These just look like normal knit stitches, okay? But there's a pretty big gap right here. You see from my last stitch to my next one, somewhere in between the bottom of this stitch and the bottom of this stitch. I'll first show you with the crochet hook because I think it's a little bit easier to see it that way. It does not matter where you pick it up. You could go underneath these two, you could go underneath just straight in like this. Just somewhere here, you wanna pick up a stitch. I'm gonna go into like half a stitch straight through. So I kind of have two loops on my crochet hook. You can also use your knitting needle. Yarn over it from front to back, pull a loop through, and then slide that one onto your knitting needle. 
So I'll show that to you with the knitting needle next. So you just stick your knitting needle either underneath a couple loops of a stitch or just straight through. So I still have kind of two legs of something there. Yarn over, pull through, and there you have it. So I originally had eight stitches, so I count eight over, two, four, six, eight. So now I'm going to count how many I have here. So I picked up 12 from the edge of my heel flap and one extra down here to prevent any holes. So I need to pick up 13 on the other half. Okay, so be sure to write that down to keep track. So now this is gonna feel wonky, but you're going to go ahead and kind of turn your work a little bit, slide your resting stitches back onto this needle. So we're going to be knitting across needle two stitches here and then picking up stitches along the other half of our heel flap. I can pull out the back needle. You can kind of push them together like this and then pull out the back needle. Go ahead and knit across these current needle two stitches. So now we have all of this heel flap here that we need to pick up. So in order to be symmetrical, you wanna pick up the same amount that you picked up on the other half. So I have 13 that I picked up on the other half, one to close the gap to prevent any holes, and then 12 along the side of the heel flap. This one can feel kind of clunky, but I'm gonna pull on this just to get myself a little bit of extra cord. Kind of scrunch up my stitches on needle two. If this is too clunky, it might be easier with a crochet hook. If I were to start picking up on my heel flap right now, I would have a hole in between my needle two stitches and my heel flap stitches. So the same thing that we did on the other side where we kind of picked up one here to prevent that hole. You can use a crochet hook, stick your needle or, or your crochet hook in there. Yarn over, pull a loop through, and then slide that onto your needle too. You can also do it with your needle. It helps to have most of your stitches scrunched up here closer to the tip of the needle. You can also just take your needle through a stitch or two, yarn over, pull through, and you've picked one up that way. Do you see how we have a line of Vs here? They look like this, going all the way up. We're going to go from the outside in, so this direction, and pick those up the same way that we picked them up on the other side. So you can use a crochet hook or a knitting needle. So here's the first one that I see. You can see it right here. Looks like a V. Take your needle and go underneath both legs of that from front to back, underneath both legs, yarn over, pull through, and there you go. So there's one. Do you see the next one right here? Looks like a V. Go underneath both legs of that from front to back, like this, right there, yarn over, pull through. What's the next one, which is right, which is right about here? And then we yarn over from front to back. Pull a loop underneath both those legs. And you just do that until you have as many that you need to match the other side. So remember, I needed to pick up one to prevent a hole and then 12 along the side of this heel flap. I keep going. And I'll check my count along the way here in a second. This is gonna feel really cumbersome. Your stitches are gonna feel like they're being stretched. You can always scrunch up these needle two stitches. That's what I do. I think that makes it a little bit easier. Also using a crochet hook will help. If I look down, here's all the stitches I've picked up so far. So one to prevent a hole, and then I should have 12. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. I need to pick up one more. If you don't see an easily identifiable slip stitch, just do your best to pick up an edge stitch here. You can kind of see this is two loops that create a V. Yarn over, pull a loop through. There you have it. I've picked up 13 total stitches. Now this looks really wonky, right? But go ahead and turn your work. Push your stitches up onto your closer needle. So currently, this is needle one because it has our beginning of round marker, and this is needle two and it has all the gusset stitches, so you should have a lot of stitches right now. The longer you made your heel flap, the more stitches you'll have now. We're gonna start decreasing a lot of stitches, so it will start to take shape, and it will start to get a lot easier to manage. It's kinda like this. So right now, we're doing this section here. We're kind of turning this off so that we have this curve for our heel. 
So now it's time to work the rest of the gusset. So at this point, you'll need a couple of stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers, you can just make a couple slip knots with yarn and create your own makeshift stitch markers that way. For setup round two, you're going to knit a certain amount of stitches, place a marker, and then knit across for needle one. And then for needle two, you're going to knit a certain amount of stitches, place a marker, knit across. The amount of stitches are different for every size, so you can go ahead and refer to what's written on screen. For setup round two, needle one, I'm working size two, so I knit 10, place a marker, and then knit the rest of the needle. So go ahead and pull out the back needle, like we do with every other magic loop row. This is gonna feel really clunky for a few rows, but stick with it. You can scrunch up your stitches a lot if you need to, if that makes it easier. So now I need to knit 10 stitches. So go into the front loop of the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off. Since we're working in the round again, I go into the second stitch like normal, pull a little bit extra. Did you see how my cord kind of closed up there? We're trying to prevent any holes. Yarn over, pull through, slide off and then just knit normally for either 10, 12, or 13 stitches, depending on your size. So I have knit 10 stitches, so now I'm going to place a marker on my right hand needle, and then knit across the rest of your needle one stitches. Go ahead and turn your work. You can let go of your left needle, and turn, and then push the stitches up onto your closer needle. You can kind of slide them off the back if they look like they're gonna fall off. Bring our yarn in between our needles to the middle, Pull out that back needle, and you're going to knit a certain amount of stitches, place a marker, knit across. So I'm working size two, so I knit 17, and then place a marker, but refer to your size as written here. So go ahead and knit that many stitches. And remember, when you go into our second stitch, you pull a little extra tight, yarn over, pull through, slide off. So I have knit 17. I'm going to place a stitch marker on my right hand needle and knit across the rest of my needle two stitches. All right, I can let go of my left hand needle and turn my work. Slide my stitches up onto my closer needle. And that is your setup row two done. So now we get into our repeat. So for our repeat, round one will be a decrease round and round two will be plain. And you're going to repeat rounds one and two until you have only two stitches here on needle one in between the marker and the end of the needle and only four, five, or six stitches at the end of needle two here. So I'll walk you through the first decrease round, pull out the back needle. So for round one, which is our decrease round, we're going to knit to the marker, slip marker, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. So go ahead and knit to the marker. And remember when you go into the second stitch of your row, you pull a little extra tight. Now I've reached the marker, so I'm going to slip it from one needle to the next. And now we need to knit until there are only three stitches left on my needle. I have three stitches left on my left hand needle here. So I'm going to work a knit two together, knit one. So a knit two together, if you've never done one, you basically go into two stitches at the same time. The same way you would knit one stitch, you go into two and you knit them together. So instead of going into the front loop of that first stitch like this. You go into the second from the end and the first from the end. And you crisscross your needles like this. Yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through and slide off. And then I like to kind of tighten it up a little bit because it, it tends to leave a gap if I don't. And then I yarn over and knit the next stitch normally. That's the first half of our row done. Go ahead and turn your work. And as always, slide your stitches onto your closer needle. Pull out your back needle. And for needle two, you're going to knit to the marker, slip marker, knit one, SSK, knit to the end. Go ahead and knit to the marker. And when you go into the second stitch from the end, you pull a little bit tighter and then just knit it normally. Okay, I've knit to the marker. So I just need to slip it from one needle to the other, and now I'm going to work a knit one SSK and then knit to the end. So go ahead and knit one stitch, and now we're going to work an SSK. I slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to purl, and then knit those two stitches together through the back loop. I slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to purl, into the front loops of both of those stitches. At the same time, yarn over, pull a loop through, and slide off. And then I like to pull a little bit tighter just to kind of close any gap it might have. And then I knit to the end of the row. So you have just decreased two stitches 
one on each needle. Round two is just a plain row. So you knit across, slipping the markers as you come to them. So I'll show you how to do that. Pull out the back needle and then begin to knit across needle one. So remember when you go into the second stitch, pull a little extra tight and then continue knitting. And when you get to the marker, you're just going to slip it from one needle to the next and keep going. Go ahead and turn your work. Slide your stitches up onto your closer needle. Pull out the back needle and the same thing on these stitches. You knit across until you get to the marker and you slip the marker. Remember that when you go into the second stitch, you always pull a little extra tight before you knit it. Then when you get to the marker, you just slip it and continue knitting across. At the end, go ahead and turn your work. And that's it, that is your plain round. So now you just repeat rounds one and two until you have only two stitches at the end of needle one, separated by the marker, and until you have only four, five, or six stitches at the end of needle two, separated by the marker. So at the very end, you should have the total stitch count as written here. It's the same stitch count that you had at the very beginning of your sock after you joined in the round. This is the stitch count that you had. So you should have that same amount at the end. So you should have two stitches here on needle one, separated by the marker. And then when you turn your work, on the gusset side of your marker, so the one that's not connected to your leg here, on this side, you should have either four, five, or six stitches separated by the marker. So go ahead and repeat rounds one and two until you have that stitch count left. And I'll meet you back here for the final gusset round. So now I've finished all my gusset repeats. It's starting to look a lot more like a sock. To double check, I'm supposed to have two stitches at the end of needle one separated by the marker, and I do. And then I'm supposed to have five stitches on the end of needle two separated by the marker, and I do. If, for example, you have one extra stitch, so you're supposed to have two here, but you have three, but you have the correct at the end of the other needle, don't panic. You don't have to rip back or anything. Just work another set of repeats, but when it comes to your decrease row, only decrease on the half of your row that has an extra stitch, and then just work plain on the other side. I have 34 stitches, which is correct. I will have more stitches on needle two currently than needle one, that's okay. We're about to redistribute our stitches. So for our final gusset round, we're going to knit to the marker, remove the marker, knit two, and then you'll have X amount of stitches currently on needle one. For me, I'm size two, so I'll have 12 stitches. So we're going to go ahead and knit to the marker. We can remove the marker, knit to the end, and you should have this many stitches currently on needle one. I do have 12, so I'm, I'm good. Go ahead and turn your work. So for needle two, we're going to knit to the marker, remove the marker, and then slip the remaining four, five, or six stitches to needle one. So for me, it'll be the remaining five. So go ahead and knit to the marker. So I've knit to the marker, so I can go ahead and remove the marker. And now in order to slip the remaining four, five, or six stitches, in my case it's five, to the other needle, all you have to do is pull on the left needle and they'll slide onto the other half. So pull on it, and you've just transferred those stitches to the other half. You should have this many stitches on needle two. You should now have the same number of stitches on needle one and needle two. So I have 17 stitches on both needles as I'm supposed to for a total of 34. So now we've decreased all the way down to our original stitch count and we've redistributed our stitches. So you can see how we have the beginnings of our sock. You are right about here. So you've gotten down to your regular stitch count and now you just need to knit the foot. Now that you're done with the gusset, it's time to start on the rest of the sock. So we're going to work the foot, which is just plain, and then you work the toe decreases. First, you're going to need to find how long your foot is. There's a few ways you can do this. You could measure your foot by stepping on a piece of paper and putting a line where your heel ends and where your toe ends and then measure that. Or you could Google your, your shoe size and look up an average foot length for that size. And then what you do is you take a measuring tape and you measure along the bottom of your sock from your heel turn until the end of your gusset, however long that is along the bottom of your foot. And you take your total foot length, subtract your heel and gusset length, and subtract the toe length, which I have written here as well. And that will give you the total length that you need to knit for your sock just in the foot area. And then you can multiply that by 6.5, which is our row gauge per one inch, 2.5 centimeters, to get how many rows you need to knit plain. Another thing you can do is you can use a sock ruler. So this is a really cheap tool that you can use. I have several of these and I really, really like them. I think they're perfect if you knit a lot of socks. 
So essentially what you do is you figure out, okay, how long is my foot? I have a 10 inch long foot from the very end of my heel to the end of my toe. And I'm knitting a 1.5 inch toe. So that gives me eight and a half inches. So that is how long I need my sock to be before I start my toe decreases. This goes technically up to 10 inches. So I'm placing a post-it note for eight and a half, which is what I need. Stick the sock ruler until it hits against the back heel. And I am just about perfect. If I remove this, you can kind of see the eight and a half right there. And I am perfectly on that line. So this is just a really great tool. But if you don't have one of these, you could always measure out the length of your foot minus your toe and cut it out in a piece of cardboard and do this kind of same thing. Now that we've knit our foot as long as we want it to be, it's time to start the toe decreases. So we're going to work in stock in it until the foot of your sock measures X amount of inches or centimeters from your desired length. It's either going to be one and a half or one and three quarters inch or four or four and a half centimeters from your desired length. So the toe decreases are worked towards the beginning and end of each needle. It creates a nice slope and both socks are worked the exact same way. So there's no difference between your left foot and your right foot. They're worked exactly the same. And each size of the pattern will have a different amount of rows. In the beginning, you will be alternating between a decrease row and a plain row. Once we get further into the toe, it will just be decrease row after decrease row. And every decrease row is worked the exact same. And it's worked the same on each needle. So you work a knit one SSK, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. And then on needle two, same thing. And every decrease round is worked the same as decrease round one. Then after decrease round four, some sizes will stop having plain rounds and some will continue. An X next to your size means that you skip that. Go ahead and pull out the back needle and we're going to work a knit one SSK, knit to the last three, knit two together, knit one. To begin, we're going to knit the first stitch as normal and then we're going to work an SSK. So we've worked this a few times. So you slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second as if to purl and then go into them and knit them through the back loop. Slip the first one as if to knit. So go into it as if you're going to knit it, but just slip it. Go into the second stitch as if to purl, but just slip it as well. Take your left needle into the front loops of both of those stitches at the same time. Yarn over, pull the loop through, and slide off. And I like to kind of tighten up that stitch a little bit. And then knit across the needle until you have only three stitches left. So we have also worked in it two together before. So you go into the next two stitches at the same time as if you're going to knit them and knit them together. So instead of going into one, you go into the front loops of two at the same time. Yarn over, pull a loop through, slide off. Pull a little extra tight and knit the last stitch. Go ahead and turn your work. Slide your stitches up onto the closer needle. Pull out the back needle. And we do that same process on this needle. So knit the first stitch. Work an SSK, slip as if to knit, slip as if to purl, into the front loops of both. Yarn over, pull a loop through and slide off. And after every decrease, I always tighten up the yarn just a little bit and then knit to the last three stitches. And once you get down to the final three, you'd work a knit two together. So into the next two stitches at the same time, yarn over, pull a loop through and slide off and then knit the final stitch. Go ahead and turn your work. And that was your decrease row. You should have decreased four stitches in total, two on each needle, and you should have this many stitches left on each needle. So remember that we're going to work every decrease round in this section the same as this decrease round. So decrease round one is your model. You will work every other decrease round the same way. You're now going to be alternating plain rounds and decrease rounds. And again, if it has an X in the place of your size, that means to skip that round. So in the end, you should have five, six, and seven stitches on each needle. So go ahead and work what's written here, your decrease section and rewind back to our decrease round one if you need a refresher on how to work any of the decrease rounds. So go ahead and do that and I will show you how to do the Kitchener stitch. So I've just finished decrease round five and I'm ready to move on to decrease round six. So for my size, decrease round six, it's the last round of my toe because if I look at decrease round seven, it says sizes two and three, skip to Kitchener stitch. If you lose track, you can also just count your stitches. So I have two, four, six, seven on each needle and I need to have five when I move on to the Kitchener stitch. So I need to do one more decrease round. So I will walk you through that. I'll walk you through my one final 
decrease round. So I knit the first stitch and I like to pull a little extra tight once I get down to this few stitches just to prevent any gaps and holes around the toe. Then slip as if to knit, slip as if to purl into the front loops of both, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And then I knit to the final three stitches, which for me, I only need to knit one. And then I knit two together, pull a little tight after the decrease, and then knit the final stitch. I have only five remaining on this needle, so I can go ahead and turn my work. And then pull out the back needle and do the same thing. So knit the first stitch, slip the second as if to knit, the third as if to purl, into the front loops of both, yarn over, pull a loop through, slide off, and then pull a little tight to close any gap, knit to the final three stitches, which for me is just a knit one, and then knit two together, pull a little bit tight, and knit the final stitch. And then I can go ahead and turn my work again, and that's it. That is your toe decrease section. We need to close up the toe because we have our toe pretty much ready, but we have two sides that are not connected and we want them to connect to make an actual toe. We're going to graft one side to the other and it creates this pretty seamless effect. You can cut yourself a tail that's, you know, probably a maximum of 12 inches. It doesn't have to be super long. So you can go ahead and thread your tail through your yarn needle and you're ready to work the Kitchener stitch. So now I'm gonna walk you through the Kitchener stitch, which is the final bit when knitting a sock. So we're going to join our stitches from needle one to our stitches on needle two. There are a couple different ways to do this. Some tutorials will have you do a setup and some will not. I'm going to show this to you without the setup. With our yarn coming from our back needle, it's attached to the last stitch on our needle two, and we have needle one facing us, which is the beginning of round. The Kitchener stitch is made up of four steps. So on needle one, you will knit off, purl on, and for needle two, you will purl off, knit on. So a knit off means that you go into the stitch as if to knit it and slide it off the needle, pulling the yarn through. And a purl on means that you go into the stitch as if to purl, but leave it on the needle. And then a purl off means that you go into the stitch as if to purl it, pull the yarn through and slide it off the needle. And then a knit on means you go into the stitch as if to knit it, but leave the stitch on the needle. So needle one is a knit off purl on. So I kind of just pull out the back needle just to get it out of the way. And we're going to knit off. So go into the first stitch as if to knit it like this, pull the yarn through and slide it off of your knitting needle. And I like to kind of pull on the yarn a little bit and then we need to purl on. So go into the next stitch on needle one as if to purl. So from right to left, pull the yarn through, but leave it on your needle. And now we switch gears and go to needle two where we will purl off, knit on. Go into the first stitch from right to left as if to purl, pull the yarn through. You want the yarn coming underneath needle one, not over top of it. And now we slide that stitch off of needle two. We go into the next stitch on needle two as if to knit it like this, pull the yarn through it, but leave it on your needle. I like to pull just a little bit snug after each motion. So we've just decreased one stitch from each needle. So you should have one less than you started with. And that was your repeat. Back to the front needle. I kind of slide my stitches up on the closer needle. Go into the next stitch as if to knit. Pull the yarn through. And then slide it off. You can kind of tug on it to close it up a little bit. And then purl on. So go into the next stitch on needle one as if to purl. So from right to left. Pull the yarn through. And that's halfway done. Now we need to purl off, knit on. So I go from right to left into the next stitch on my needle two. Pull the yarn through and slide it off your needle and then knit off. So go into that stitch as if to knit it. Pull the yarn through, but leave it on your needle. So you can also do this kind of in one motion instead of two. So for needle one, knit off, purl on. I go into the first stitch as if to knit slide it off my needle, but my yarn needle is still in it. Go into the next one as if to purl, and then pull the yarn through. I find that to be easier. And then in the back, I purl off, so into the first stitch as if to purl from right to left, 
slide it off with my yarn needle still in it, and then go into the next stitch as if to knit, like this, pull the yarn through. That I think is just slightly easier, but it's up to your preference. And now we have two left, so knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. And now we have only one stitch on each needle. So when you get down to the final two stitches, you're going to knit off needle one and purl off needle two. So you go into the first stitch on needle one as if to knit and slide it off. And you can pull the yarn through and then go into the final stitch on needle two as if to purl. So from right to left, pull the yarn through and slide it off. And you can kind of tug on the yarn to close up any gaps, but it'll look like this. Now that we have done our Kitchener stitch, you might have a little bit of like a tail. That's okay, we can get rid of that when we're weaving in our ends. So I'm going to remove my beginning around marker because I don't need it anymore. So now I'm going to bring this tail yarn through to the wrong side of my sock. So what I do is I kind of roll it up a little bit just to make it easier to work with. Take my yarn needle and with my other hand inside of the sock, I'm going to go from the right side to the wrong side. You don't want to undo anything that you've done. So my yarn is coming out of this stitch right here. So I want to be careful not to go back through that specific stitch. So just go down like a stitch below that or two below and bring it to the wrong side of your work. And then turn your sock inside out and you can kind of pull a little bit tight on it. It should bring that kind of towards the inside. Here's the inside of our toe. So we are gonna weave in our ends. This doesn't have to be super specific. There's no one right way or one wrong way to do this. You don't wanna go directly straight down or straight over. You wanna go kind of diagonal. So you could go just through some loops diagonally if you wanted, but I will show you how I do it. So I'll give you a quick little rundown on my extra sock because it's a little bit easier to show. So I don't know how well you can see this, but on the reverse side of a plain knit sock, you have just like rows of loops. They kind of go in this shape like this, which you can kind of see here. So it creates kind of like an upside down U, and I want to mimic that shape. I'll show you just quickly what it looks like before we use our actual example. So let's say that my yarn is coming out of here. I want to find a nearby loop. If I look nearby, there's this loop right here which is this shape, if you can kind of see it. If this is it right here, I wanna go through the bottom, up on the left, and then back down on the right. Go through the bottom, up on the left, pull through, down on the right side of that upside down U, and down through that bottom piece again. So you can't fully see it because some of it's hidden. It is that upside down U motion. If we look one more over, just in that same row, we can find another one, which is right here. So it goes up and around. And we want to mimic like this thread right here, which is the left half of, of this shape. We go in through the bottom piece, up on the left, down on the right and down through the bottom. You just kind of want to do that same motion all the way across. So through the bottom of one loop, up on the left side, down on the right, and down through the bottom again. And then the next bottom loop over here, up through the bottom and up on the left side. down on the right side and back through that bottom piece. That's just a quick basic tutorial on how I weave in my ends in stockinette. Let's apply that to our sock. So if I turn it upside down, I can see that I have these kind of, these shapes, which some, some people think more, look more like a V. So I have them here, because every knit stitch on the reverse side will look like this. 
towards the side edges here, that's where our decreases are. So they look a little bit different. But essentially what I do is I just find like an area of knit stitches that are pretty close. So like right there. So what I'm going to do is try and get over to that. So I go underneath just a couple loops here that I can find. It doesn't have to be exact. I just go under a couple. Again, you don't want to go through the same stitch that your yarn is coming out of because you don't want to undo it. And I'm going to do that one more time just to get myself a little bit further down. And now I'm close to a stitch. So it kind of looks like this shape. It goes up on one side, around the loop at the top, and down. So we want to mimic that. So here's the very bottom of it. So we go up through the bottom. And then the left side of it here. And then here's the top of it. So we want to go around the top on the right side instead and down and then down through the middle that we came up through initially. And we've just mimicked this stitch here. Looks like extra thick because we basically have created an additional layer on top of it that looks exactly the same. And I'm going to go over another. So here's another one. So we find the very bottom of it, which is this one right here. Go up through the bottom. Here's the left side of that stitch. Go up. Here's the right side of it right here. Go down. Now you don't want to pull super tight. You want the tension of your stitch to look about the same as the one that you're mimicking. And then we just go down through the middle where we first came up through that stitch. So you can just do that a couple of times and a couple of different stitches. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way that you prefer. This is just the most secure that I've found. And then I just I kind of take my needle and split a couple of stitches going diagonal. So I only pick up part of the stitch instead of the full one like that. And then pull my yarn through. I can go ahead and cut my yarn. I leave just a tiny bit of a tail. My stitch has been wrapped up in a couple of mimic stitches. And then we went diagonal and split a few stitches. So I'm confident that that is okay. I can go ahead and kind of turn my sock inside out. And now we want to look at the cast on tail and do virtually the same thing. So thread it through a yarn needle. Now, do you see the hole that it's coming out of? It's coming out of this hole right here. So we don't want to go through that hole because that will start to undo our cast on. I'm going to pick a different hole to go through and go from the right side to the wrong side. Pull my yarn through, turn it just a little ways inside out. You can weave your ends in however you see fit. This is just how I do it. I'm going to go up along the side of what looks like a knit stitch. So it looks like a bunch of V's that go like this. I'm going to go up along the right leg of it. So I'm just going to go up diagonal like that. Pull through. Go up diagonal through the next one. Only the right leg. And I'm doing this until I get to the stockinette portion. We have a bunch of the same type of stitches. They might look like V's to you or they might look like more of an octopus shape, but I want to mimic a couple of those stitches again. Pick a stitch. I'm going to pick this one right here. So here's the bottom of it. So I'm going to go up through the bottom. Here's the left side of it. Up through the left side. Here's the right side. So I go down through the right side. And I find that bottom again, which is right here. And I go down. And then I move over one stitch. So here's the next one over. I'm going to do the same thing. Go through the bottom, go through the left, down on the right, down through the bottom, up through the bottom, up through the left, kind of diagonal. Down on the right side, down on the bottom. Now you can do this for two or three stitches. You don't really have to do it for that many. And then I'm going to go split a couple stitches. Diagonal. Pull my yarn and cut with a little tiny bit of tail. Since this is the inside of my sock, I don't really care that much. And it is right here. But you can't tell from the right side that I've done that. So that's pretty much it. When it comes to washing and blocking your socks, this is something that I think is fairly popular online to use something like a sock blocker, but 
in my experience, a sock blocker is really great for displaying a stitch pattern in like a podcast, but when it comes to functionally using a sock blocker in your everyday life, I don't use them because I find that if I use a sock blocker, it stretches my sock out and then it doesn't fit like it should. What I do is I soak them and you might put some wool wash or something in the water if you want, but I soak them. I gently push out the extra water in a towel. I lay them flat to dry. It may take a while because you've got two layers of fabric here. That's what I do. I let them dry for a couple days and then they're ready to wear. It also helps to even out any wonky stitches or anything like that. I just like how they naturally fit when you don't really tamper with them. That is how you knit a pair of vanilla socks. I hope this video was easy enough for you guys to follow so that you could knit your first pair of socks. Let me know if you've knit a pair of these in the comments. And if you liked this video, please like it and subscribe for more. And if you want any of my knitting patterns, you can find them on Etsy, Ravelry, and Lovecrafts. It's a great way to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Happy knitting!